I am so happy today to have Kristin from Trade Guardian in the virtual room with me. Thanks so much for joining me today. All right, thank you. Now, what I would love to do is, we, I've known you for a few years and you run a successful company. You're a very busy entrepreneur, mom, <laughs> doing all sorts of of things in your life and it's very impressive how much you manage with such grace i feel like you're you're very graceful when it comes to multitasking and and running a, a very successful company but also being very productive i didn't want to say busy so i'd yeah. love to hear a little bit of your secrets and before we get into that why did you well tell us a little bit about your business first and then why did you decide to run your own company um, well, the business is Trade Guardian, and we provide um, really bookkeeping and payroll admin support for lots of trade people and small business owners. Um, I, I've been running the business for about 12 years. Um, we're in Canberra, so of course Canberra is a really good public service town, or it certainly was, you know, historically. And when I, I was a good public servant for a very long time. And probably about 14 years ago, when I went on maternity leave with my last child, I, I wanted to try something different and work for myself. So that was kind of where this came from. It was that sort of change in direction. And while I loved what I'd done before, I really wanted to find something different. And, and Canberra was changing. It was becoming a bit more dynamic as well. And sort of that split between private business and, and public service was changing. So it seemed like a good time. To, to do something else. Uh, so we kicked off when my children were young and it's kind of evolved over the, the last decade into what it is now. So. And, and why did you decide bookkeeping? And also why did you decide to work with specializing more or less in trades people? Um, look, it, it started off, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't really think about what to do next. So, I was kind of at a, at a crossroads and I actually started helping my dad. He was a painter at the time and him and his partner were a typical, stereotypical tradie, really disorganised, really good at painting, really bad at everything else to do with running a business. And so I started helping them and they literally came to me with a suitcase full of you know, messy paperwork. And I, I could see the significant difference I made to their business taking those aspects over and the, the difference it made to his mental state, you know, with everything being in, in control and organised. And, and also they doubled their revenue really quickly because I took over quoting and pricing and, and uh, chasing money and that back end of it. So, and I really enjoyed it. I, I really got a, a big kick out of it. So that kind of was the starting point. Um, it was also really refreshing working with um, Trades people, and it's a thriving sector here in Canberra, the building and construction sector. Um, so that's why that's where it all sort of came from. That was the, the the starting point. We just sort of incrementally rolled out from there. Um, and it's nice seeing the difference. You know, these trades work really hard on site, or even you know, restaurant owners. They they're caught up in their business all day on a building site. The last thing they need to do is come home at the end of the day and, and deal with the paperwork. So we've really kind of filled that role in quite nicely and make a big difference to them. So that's that's how it started. Yeah, and, and so I can see it's sort of a combination of of enjoyment and seeing the impact that you're making for, yeah. for tradespeople and just seeing it with the painters and how you talk a little bit about their mental state, how peace of mind. Yeah. bringing that and also they doubled their revenue so very very rewarding over the last 12 years of running a company what were some of your most difficult moments or even a difficult moment and then how did you overcome that challenge oh look i think it's just been that evolution and there's been lot, lots of good bits hard bits um along the way i think we're I've, it's just i'm always learning there's always something new to to learn, and I think in the beginning it was really about, um, especially shifting from working in the public service. It was that understanding my value and what we could add to a business, and really about that uh, concept of charging people uh, for what we do. Um, had to get over that one really quickly, though. Um, 
to give up. So that was that was hard in the beginning. And I think then midway through it, it was about the growth of the business, um, about getting ready to employ staff, how to manage those staff, how to get everything out of my head and, and into a platform where we could sort of grow the business. So it was about proceduralising our work and being a bit more consistent. So that was that was a bit of a challenge. And, you know, we built in the tools that we had to use to do that. Um, and ongoing and noting that today is the 30th of June, um, and it's midst of end of financial year, sometimes keeping the motivation up can be hard. Um, but there's lots of ways to deal with that. You know, it's about keeping your personal life in balance and having a bit of time off. And I kind of always thrive on learning something new. So that keeps it interesting. You know, even after doing this for as long as I have, there's always something uh, going on to, to learn or do differently. So Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask that because I know a lot of listeners and viewers here, they often... It's normal, I guess, in life and as an entrepreneur too, is sometimes to struggle with motivation. And there might be days where we wake up and we're like, oh, you know, another day of this thing. So I was actually going to ask you, how do you manage that? And you say, you know, keeping the balance in life and learn for you, learning is a big driver. Are yeah. there any other strategies that you use? Uh, look, I, I think, and that's something I've really been keen on for the whole time is, and, and probably one of the, the highlights of having done this overall for this length of time. I'm actually really proud of the team that we have. It, I'm surrounded by amazing, clever people all the time. And our clients, and I have a bit of control over who we work with as well, our clients are amazing. So being surrounded by that positivity is, that's what makes the difference. So yes, and then I just have to occasionally have some time off to do something else. And, you know, given I, we do accounting stuff, I try and do stuff outside of work that's the exact opposite to keep some sort of balance there. So. Yeah, a team makes such a big impact when you have yeah. a team. We run some sessions here on, on culture and team, and, and I always say that t your culture is like a magnifier of everything. If you have a really good culture and a good team, everything else in business is great. And if it's the opposite, everything else is a little bit more oh, difficult. I, I agree. And I think, you know, something years ago, my husband said to me, you know, you're so lucky because you, you get to make all the decisions. And it, on one hand, I was going, yeah, but I also carry all the responsibility. And I kind of thought if I turn that around and go, actually, I can make the decisions about the people I work with and the, the, the clients we work with. And if I focus on controlling that aspect of it and really work heavily in that area, it really changed my mindset, but also made a massive difference to how we work. So we spent a bit of time, and, and out of the kind of bunch of work that we did, where we talked on you know, setting our values and the culture of our team, I really took all that stuff to heart and implemented that and try to push that into every aspect of what we do. So. Yeah, that's actually a good segue into the Clever Bunch because I feel like I've known you for a few years now in the Clever Bunch and then now in the Genius Bunch. So you're a genius and you always have so much to bring to the community too. What What is one of the reasons at the beginning, a few years back, why did you choose to join the Clever Bunch? Because it can be quite a daunting decision to make. Yeah, it took me a long time too. I think I always grappled with the marketing side of the business. I think, you know, when you run the business yourself, you have to do everything, right? Order the stores, do the marketing, manage the IT, run the business, you know. That's one aspect that I probably never really had great momentum with or, or took responsibility for, I guess. Um, and I attended one of the blast-offs that you held in Canberra years ago um, and was walked away motivated, really inspired, but I kind of still held back. Um, I have done a an MBA, which had you know, marketing courses in it. And so, of course, I knew the principles and, and I thought I knew what I should be doing. But at the end of the day, I never really implemented anything. Um, so eventually I just went, I needed to join. I needed some accountability and I needed some guidance to break it down from that kind of high level of principle, you know, creating an elaborate marketing, marketing plan to getting some help to actually do things in smaller chunks and actually get some real practical guidance. So that's why I ended up joining. 
Yeah, I love that. And and we get quite a few people that have done MBAs and MBAs are obviously great. Actually, my brother is he's a Swiss banker and he's doing an MBA right now, although his, his involves a lot of drinking for some reason. Uh, yes, this international, <laughs> an international group. And every, anytime he calls me, he's in some some bar somewhere in the world. I'm like, what are you doing on MBA? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, mine wasn't that much fun. No, mine was, <laughs> mine was more classroom boring, yes. Uh, well, it, it, but but again, as you say, it's, it's really good stuff. And then you then also chose to join our community for the practical side of things, accountability. What are some of the results or what are some of the things that you have achieved throughout the Clever Bunch and now the Genius Bunch too? Um, I think, you know, for the first time I had a really simple practical strategy or a framework where I knew what I was doing and how I was going to do it. And I really got that for the first time um, of running a business. So that was probably, and it was something I was really hoping for. So that was a good tick for me. Um, I think our communication became much more targeted and clear. So we really have to clearly determine who we wanted to work with and what that, that sort of client looked like. Um, so that kind of then fed into all the, the communication we had during our marketing or sales processes. Um, we also ended up with much more clearer and consistent branding, uh, both online and you know, in all our touch points along the way, uh, which was a bonus. And we did a bit more work around our online presence, which we'd not really done before. I think so much of our work is referral-based, but I've not really relied on that. But now we have you know, a clearer website and we use social media, which has really improved our communication touch points with all our, our clients. So that's been a, a good win. Um, and the other really good thing that I've liked is I've been able to kind of link those marketing aspects into our, just our normal internal activities, whether it's recruitment, team building and getting the staff to start doing that as part of their normal roles as well so that's been a really big win for us yeah i love how you did that actually you you you're taking your team on this journey with you so it's it's not just you doing the marketing but the whole team is on board as you said which makes more sense because i've got the you know 10 to 12 staff they they're the ones that are having the relationship with our clients and out talking to people so it's better than it just sitting with me yeah it's very clever I like how you how, how you make them a part of your marketing journey because they all communicate with you right. yeah one one last quick question on the clever bunch there are so many different aspects to the clever bunch there's the community there's the the support where we critique campaigns and support business owners there are the sessions what, what are some of your favorite parts about the Clever Bunch? Uh, look, for me, it was, um, I, I've not touched into another organisation or a, a network like that that was just so positive and motivating. Um, that was the big win. You know, if you think about when my Clever Bunch session was about to start, was when COVID started. Yeah. Meant to do, you know, the monthly sessions um, face to face. and. We all very quickly had to change how we were doing that and it went online and you guys did an amazing job of, of doing that and the sessions were just as rewarding, just as fantastic even online and I you know, used to look forward to those every month. Um, you know, 2020 was challenging, that, that year of that, of that course, but I always kind of, it was so positive. Um, I think when you run a business, you don't often get to talk to other business owners about how things are, are going. Um, everyone's a bit secretive and competitive. So to be able to look in with a, another group of business owners who are really open and supportive during that tricky year was, that was the absolute highlight for them. Yeah, I agree. And you know, my marketing got better. So, you know, I, I also got what I signed up for. So that's really important as well. Yeah, I, and I couldn't agree more, especially in, in those few years that were so so challenging i did feel like the community got even stronger and more supportive and caring and sharing and and as you say especially in the genius bunch we have people are so so deep in terms of sharing also because of the confidentiality 
agreement that we have with each other and it's it's such an important part of running a company now you have been in business for 10 12 years years, you've learned a lot you have a lot to share also with fellow business owners what 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 do you wish you had known when you first started I really know. I actually thought about this one, and I, I don't even think I've got a good answer for you for that. Um, it's almost what you, you know. You don't. I, I think if I knew what I knew now, I perhaps wouldn't have tried it in the beginning. So maybe the naivety was a, a, a good starting point. Um, that's, that sounds terrible. It doesn't sound yeah, like no. give it a go, but um, there's so much to know. I. Just, I think we've enjoyed the journey. I think that's been a, a good thing. Yeah, and I and I agree. You know, to a certain degree, sometimes being a little bit naive, as you call it, is almost can almost help. Yes, so, I think so. Yeah. There are not too many blockages. It's just like okay, but you know, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And the very last thing I want to ask you is because you do have a lot of wisdom for other people based on your journey. What is one word of wisdom or a few words of wisdom that you would like to impart? I think as you're going on the journey, I think you need to get involved with other business owners or groups or service providers to get the support that you need along the way um, and to get the experience in the areas that you don't have. I think that's really important. I mean, in our business, we're saying that to business owners all the time. You, know, you shouldn't do the bookkeeping. You shouldn't do the payroll. You should give it to us because we're experienced. Sometimes uh, you need to remember to apply that to yourself as well, which is you know, the exact example I went out to you guys to get the marketing experience. Um, so really tucking into that is where you're going to get your, your help on, on your journey and to be really open-minded about where you look for it. That's probably the best advice I can give you. Yeah, that's super helpful. Thank you so much for that. And- and again, I agree. Open-mindedness and also asking the right people. Yeah, yeah, asking the right people for very specialized. I'm very like, much a believer, like you say, in specialized. Stuff. Yeah. Asking people that have specialized knowledge to help you with that one thing and then asking another person to help with that one thing. Right. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks again for sharing your, your thoughts, your intel your your ideas with our audience i really appreciate it it's a pleasure and thank you for all your help along the way you and christo have been amazing not only both you and christo but your whole team i mean i even get calls from liesl regularly they are amazing are you doing what you said you were going to do so it's been greatly appreciated thank you so much thank you and all the viewers and the listeners thank you again for tuning in if you want to connect with Kristen, where would you like them to connect? LinkedIn or website or wh- where can uh, you? On our, on our website, it has all our contact details. So. Tradeguardian.com.au. Right. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Thanks so much. We'll put everything in the show notes too for anyone who wants to get in touch with Kristen. And thank you. Thanks for joining us. And thank you, Kristen. Thank you.